What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. We are playing some more Zoo Tycoon 2 where we are building Jurassic World. We are here at our last little exhibit, the Gallimimus Valley. All the Montosaurs, the Parasaurs, and the Gallimimus seem to be having a blast. And today, we are going to finish up the rest of the big planes. That's right guys, we're doing what would probably be my personal favorite part of Jurassic World if I were to visit the Gyrosphere. Now, for the Gyrosphere, as you see, I, little, I set up a little uh, exit ramp, I guess, for uh, for the park guests to go towards it. Um, it's big. It's really big, guys. That's the thing about the Gyrosphere. So, here is the game plan. It's not going to be anything that special, not going to be anything that fancy, I don't think, per se. This part here overlaps with the Cretaceous Cruise, which we're going to be building in a future episode. So, from about here to here on the outskirts, it's going to be kind of a forest, right? Because when Zack and Gray first go onto the Gyrosphere, they're kind of like rolling in through some trees, through some, some foliage, and then they go on up this massive plain, which is where all the dinosaurs are, right? And then later on, we also see that, like, you know, it, the area overlaps with the, uh, with the Cretaceous Cruise, we saw the stegosaurs and the apatosaurs right by the water, and that part was very heavily forested. And we also saw the ankylosaurs, which the official website says are part of the uh, of the gyrosphere, even though they were. It seems like they would have like their own little part of it in the in the film. Um, but yeah, so kind of a forest on the outskirts, maybe a bit of a forest here as well, just sort of hide that ugly barrier. And considering like. This part is going to be a massive swamp or whatever. But yeah. So there's going to be a lot of dinosaurs in this exhibit too. I'm really excited. Like, my favorite dinosaurs, honestly, are sauropods. So, like, this would sort of be my uh, my big exhibit to visit. <laughs> um, let's see here. Or actually, maybe what we should do first is set up the track. That might be a good call. Set up the track so we know like what we're working around. Now let's see here. It goes which way? That way. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So it's just going to be sort of a big loop, I guess, around the planes. I don't think it has to be anything more than this, honestly. Especially considering, like, this part right here is going to be tackled by the Cretaceous Cruise. Like, we, we want to make it somewhat exclusive feeling. <laughs> okay, so, let's get ourselves some trees. This looks ancient, so we're going to put them in. hoping that like the game doesn't crash on me with the amount of trees I put in if it does you know I'll break through it I'll rework the exhibit as best as I can and just restart the video from there I mean it's an unfortunate possibility when make, when like working with the Excel map like especially when everything is a mod it's like you you know you're kind of running that risk and I think it's worth it, because I really think the end product here is going to look really cool if we can pull it off, you know? So let's just... Well, I guess I should start from here, so... It's just a matter of, like, mixing up the trees, and I really wish there was a faster way of doing this, but, well, what can you do? painful part is, like, I don't know why they're hungry. Like, they have food, they have a zookeeper in there. Okay, fine. Let's go, let's go check this dude out. And see what's going on. Just move him over there. See if this does anything. What are you doing? Okay, yeah, you're gonna go eat. 
why aren't you drinking? Oh, wait, no, never mind. There's like bowls of water right there. I was about to say, like, there's only bowls of water. Maybe you can only drink out of shot. No, no, that's definitely not it. I'll just put another bowl of water right there, hide it in case this, the ones that are like on the corners are too far out of reach. Okay, where were we? Right, trees. Endless amounts of trees. And other foliages. What was I gonna say? Right. The worst part about this is that, like, I'm gonna have to go through and, like, basically redo the entire... Well, not redo, but, like, work out the entire park so that it's gonna be covered in trees once we're done with, like, all the exhibits. Just to, like, give it that Isla Nublar jungle. What is this? This looks bizarre. Ah, uh, okay. Let's... There we go. Yeah, I know, I dig it. Yeah, I'm okay with... What is this? Ooh, Temperate Rainforest. Yeah, I'm okay with there being splotches of Temperate Rainforest in there. You know, why not? It makes it look like the ground's kind of mossy, closer to the water. And if any of the dinosaurs have an issue with it, we'll just run over it with grassland. Yeah, whereas, like, we covered the Gallimimus portion with more, like, actual grass and stuff, I think this part is a little too big. I'm sure many of you can, uh, understand why we're not going to be doing it based on that alone. Just going to put a little grove of these kind of, like, right over here and, like, nowhere else. I think that'd be kind of cool. Like, just this part. This is where they sprung up, and that's where they're staying. Ooh, I like that. That looks kind of prehistoric. Um, uh, no, definitely not. Um, Swamp Cypress? No, we'll save that for the actual wetlands cruise portions. What do you mean they can't get close enough to view that exhibit? Sure they can! You just gotta climb up those stairs. There's no guests even remotely close. What are you complaining about? Oh, right. I guess you guys are probably looking over the edge. Well, we'll fix this part here, too. <laughs> um, or maybe not. I don't know. I guess it's kind of cool to offer options. It's not like it gives away the main part of the tour, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, like, the random splotches and, like, melding habitats and stuff, it could look cool, it could look really dumb. We'll decide once we're actually done with all the trees. And I'm gonna try to put some underbrush in there, too, you know, just to fill it up from the bottom up a little bit. Okay, not with those, those things are tiny. Those are also tiny, but... Damn it, they, they look good. <laughs> they look so good. Like, only around the track and the river, really, because that's the only place that they're going to be, like, actually visible. Ooh, we should actually totally cover this part up completely in a forest, too, now that I think about it. Like, from here to here. Something like that. Except with a lot more trees. I think that's just gonna add to, like, the general, like, aesthetic of the exhibit really well. Uh, it's like the little fence thing is right there, and it's kind of annoying, but, you know, not much to do about that. Um, California oak? No. Fur oak? I mean, we could put some out here just to sort of hide that area a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Okay. And then... 
more like ferns and lower plants, I think, is what's gonna really, like, make it feel thicker, you know? But see, like, imagine that, you're just, like, slowly driving through, like, this little forest jungle thing, and then suddenly, boom, Triceratops, boom, Stegosaurus, and, oh my god, it's just gonna be so cool. Like, yeah, if there was just, like, one part of the park that I could tour, this, this would steal my heart. This would just, oh man, this would, I could, I could, like, go through on a gyrosphere, and I could die happy, basically. There we go, there we go. This is like, that's a great thing to just thicken it all up. That is fantastic. And I don't want to make this part too thick, I guess, because I want there to be like dinosaurs on the banks that are visible. But I also don't want it to be like a completely embarrassing forest. <laughs> Definitely gonna like spam him right there though, so we can avoid that wall as much as possible. Okay, maybe put some trees right there. The game icon just kind of closed on me, so that's like a sign to just chill out with the trees a little bit, I think. At least for, for a second. <sighs> Suddenly getting worried about the eventual entire foliaging of the park. Oh, uh, thank god we have a backup. I'm gonna save just in case. Time for the backup. Okay, let's just take a look at how this would look from the river perspective. Okay, I would definitely want to cover up the zoo walls on the outside. I want to give the appearance that that's just sort of like a forest that keeps going on and on and on, you know? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll work on those walls over there once we're actually doing the cruise itself. And it's probably going to stop us right here, yep. Honestly, like, I like the way this part looks. I'm just going to, like, put something to hide those walls up there, which the earlier... Ferns that we had worked really, really well for that. But where are they? I think it was one of these. Was it this one? It wasn't this one, but I like it, so I'm gonna put some in.
Okay, well, let's take a look. You know, that actually did not work out as well as I hoped it would. I mean, I mean, it's like halfway there, but... But it definitely needs some more assistance. Like, that's the one thing, is, is like, these zoo walls are just gonna take us out of, like, the realism. And I know there's a hack out there that removes zoo walls, but when I tried installing it this one time, it just freaked out my entire game. All, like, my textures just went to hell. So, I'm not exactly keen on trying that again. Okay, I think, I think that'll do, like... It's not as evident, it's not as painfully evident that there's, like, a zoo wall right there. I might thicken this part up a little bit, too, real quick. Because, like, while I do want, you know, dinosaurs to be visible in it, I want it to be more than, like, a single line of trees. No, definitely not you. Definitely not you. No, I made it clear I only wanted one row of you. Okay. This is... This is kind of looking like what I had in mind. This part looks okay, I think. Like, let's... Let's just test it out through the actual... Thicket. Yeah, that looks good. And where's the other part? You know what? Hold on. There we go. Yep, that looks pretty good. From out here. Yeah, I think that'll do. I think that'll do. Okay. Right. So. What we want to do now is I want to get a little bit of foliage out here. And I think I'm going to take the easy way out here for a second because this is such a massive, you know, area. And I'm just going to do this. And, you know, normally I try to avoid just, like, brushing it over. But, like I said, it's such a huge portion of the park. It would just make my life so much easier to do this. And, like, I figure you're going to be focusing on the dinosaurs so much, you're not going to really notice the odd placements of the grass and how it's... In, like, little clumps, whatever, you know. It's not that bad. I think that's fine. Okay. Um. That'll do it for the exhibit, I think. Because there's, like, other than the dinosaurs themselves, I don't think there's any, like, massive, important part of the gyrosphere that I'm forgetting. So, why don't we take a second here to just set up the actual, like, lead-in to the exhibit. Which, I guess there's gonna be a backside to that entrance as well, so let's make sure that's set up. Okay, now, what I did, actually... Um, I should show you guys. I found some cool new skeleton mods. Well, I don't think they're new, but, like, point is, we got ourselves a Spinosaur skeleton, and it's not, you know, the Spinosaur from Jurassic Park. It's, like, the updated real-world Spinosaur. But, considering this is probably where the pathway to T-Rex Kingdom is going to lead, it's nice that we at least have that, like, little bit of authenticity. Now, it came in a little pack of other skeletons that some of you guys might know. And one of them, I think, would work very well as a decoration right on the side here. It is a Barachiosaur skeleton. It's 
to make like kind of an archway into the gyrosphere. Oh, that didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. Well, hold on. How does that look as a guest? No, that actually, that looks fine. Like, I mean, okay, I guess there is the option then of, like, spacing them out a little bit more. Hold on. Let, let me experiment here real quick with the path. So let's say we do something like that, and then the Brachiosaurs could be, like, right now. I don't... and that looks kind of weird. And I don't want them too far apart either. I think that'll... that'll work. Maybe. It's like the tiniest bit... Oh, and their heads are tilting a little bit, so it won't be, like, perfect. But yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I'm content with that. Uh, there should probably be a little fence on the side or something. Or, also, what I was considering doing is putting a rope fence, and at every dead end that, it that like, you hit as you're waiting to get on the ride, uh, there'd be, like, a little info panel about one of the dinosaurs that you're going to see on the gyrosphere. So, let's assume this is the exit, right? Then, this would be the entrance right here. And then, let me think. doing this right. There we go. Wait. Boom, boom. Wait, no, hold on. How am I doing this? I, I, I had this right when I did it for, for the monorail line, and now I'm just screwing it up. Okay, here we go, here we go. It's so much more simple than I'm making it out to be. I imagine it being a little bit bigger for some reason. Mm, I don't know. Um. Yeah, I think that'll do. And then. Yeah, I guess I could do one more, like, that. <laughs> that is a massive line, though. Holy crap. Maybe it's a little too big. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I think it looks fine. There should definitely be, like, I'll just continue the rope fence, maybe. Sort of like there, and there. We'll see if that's even necessary, honestly. That might be overkill. Anyway, so we have the signs over here for various things. Um, okay, so there was a 
assigned for the Triceratops territory, which they also listed as its own sort of park area. We're just gonna put the Triceratops in the gyrosphere. Like, it was there in the film. I don't have enough room, I don't think, for Triceratops to get its own area either, so... Whatever. So, that sign can be right there. Got a Segasaurus display screen, which we'll slap right there. Yeah, for some reason, like, the display screens, there's only, like, a handful of dinosaurs on there. It's mildly annoying. Uh, let's see here. I think that says... Oh, my lord. Sucomimus, Pteranodon, Indominus. Uh, what's that one? That's definitely not it. Dimorphodon. Oh, there we go. Apatosaurus. Oh, lordy. Ankylosaurus, Microceratus, Stegosaurus. Oh yeah, Patosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Stegosaurus, Triceratops. Those are the ones we need. Anything else? No. These are the four. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So I guess my initial thought process was like, slap one of these... Like right there at the edge of every kind of dead end thing. I don't know. Here's here's what we're going to do. We're going to do that for four of them on one side and then maybe we'll just delete the rest of the line from there. Yeah, there we go. Because the more I think about it, the more I think this is like unnecessarily big. And maybe instead we could put, like, a Triceratops skeleton right there, or something like that. That could be cool. Yes, Stegosaur... Wait, hold on. Yes, okay. Let's say just from here onwards, we just delete that. I mean, knowing my life, they're just going to go through the planned exit path anyway, so... Okay. And then let's see... I think I have a Triceratops skeleton in here somewhere. I know I have a Pentaceratops at the very least. See, there's the Pentaceratops, and if we don't see the actual trike... Ah, there he is. And let me put some benches. Let's see. Mahogany bench. Yeah, whatever. Mahogany bench will do. Okay, I think that about does it for setting this part up. So let me save one more time. two more times.
Okay. And with that, I think we're ready to actually fill this thing up with dino. Why are you over there? Um, I'm pretty sure I had an invisible wall put in, like, right there. Yeah, yeah, the invisible wall is very much still there, so... That's weird. Maybe... I don't know, it must have gotten through somehow. Well, point is, I guess we're gonna have to put some zookeepers into this big portion anyway. With how big it is, I'm gonna put at least three in there. Okay. Now, for our dinosaurs. Okay. So, to start off, we have the Ankylosaur, which... Well, I guess we have two options here. This is option number one. This is option number two. There is a bit of a size difference, obviously. So, I think... Alright, we're not going to start with the Ankylosaur in that case. Why don't we put the other guys in first, and then we can go and compare size-wise what doesn't look awkward. Which means, let's go to our Apatosaurus. Now let's see. This is how big the exhibit is. This is like the biggest animal in here. I think we could get away with three or four of them without them... T well, maybe even a little more? Actually, before I forget, we need to put some food in here. <laughs> Thankfully, like, all the dinosaurs will just eat cycad leaves, so if we just scatter those all over the place, they'll blend in with the vegetation, and we'll be fine. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hide the water all around here, so that, like, everything kind of has to come here to drink. I'll put, like, one or two in these patches of grass right here. Anyway, Apatosaurus. Okay. In the film, we know there were at least six... I almost not suitable. Oh, come on. I tested you out in a grassland already, so I have no idea what you're complaining about. Okay, hold on. Idea. Usually, if you put in a misty spring or something like that, well, it will automatically kind of fix... Well, not fix it, but, like, it'll make it feel more at home. Yeah, see, like, it'll be more satisfied. I don't know, if I put in one more, will that change it even more? Maybe? Yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. We fixed it. We made it better pretty quickly. Okay, um, back to Apatosaurus. Well, I guess we never left Apatosaurus. Point being, there's two, three, four. So let's do four for now. Let's keep it at four. Real quick, let's compare the ankylosaurs. There's one. There's two. Okay. Uh, dinosaur number two. Wherever they might be. There it is. Triceratops. Again, let's do four, I think. Is there any differences with male and female? There might be for triceratops. I'm not sure. Yeah, male is bigger, and I think the horn's a little more pointy. So, I actually want to control the breeding on this one. So, we'll just do all male Triceratops for now. Okay, Stegosaurus. I do have a Jurassic Park 2 version of Stegosaurus, but look how freaking massive that is. That just would not work for this exhibit, but I do have another Stegosaurus mod downloaded a little later in the list, so let's find him. There we go. Okay, so I guess we have a choice of like three different Stegosauruses. There's the in-game one, there's the Walking Dinosaurs one, and then there's this one. We're gonna use this one because look how cool that is. Oh gosh, no, wrong way. There we go. That's, that's really awesome. That's such a cool skin. 
Alright, any difference between male, female? No, I don't think so. Alright, well, he's already male, so I'll just put males in. Uh, he's small, we can do six. Donation boxes, yeah, of course, that's what Jurassic World needs. Um, okay, and then for the Ankylosaur, again, I guess this is the size we'd be dealing with that one, or that one. I'm not entirely sure which one I want to go with, to be honest. Like, I think I like this model more, but this is like the actual Jurassic World model, I'm pretty sure. Not that that one looks that out of place, but okay. You know what, we'll just do this one for the sake of authenticity. And I'll put them right around here in the forest. And there were four of them that we know of, so we'll keep that authentic. Here, I want to put some roots in here in case they're just like already hungry. That'd be kind of cool if, like, they could just sustain themselves in the forest. Alright, awesome. So those are, I guess, the four official dinosaurs that are in the gyrosphere area. However, I think earlier on, in one of the first episodes, I might have mentioned this. That there are a few dinosaurs that are pretty much, like, intertwined with Jurassic Park lore that weren't officially in Jurassic World, but I wanted to, to stick them in here anyway. And one of them is going to be going into this exhibit because, some of you might know, their silhouettes actually made it onto a map of the gyrosphere in the film. And in case you guys haven't figured it out, it's one of the most iconic dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. We're putting the Brachiosaur in the gyrosphere. So, I think there's a mild difference in skins. Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe there's not even a size difference. I don't think so. So we're just gonna have two and three. I guess they're all just gonna be gray. Whatever. Let's put you to sleep. I guess we can't move forward, but we don't need to. Ah oh, man, just look at that. Just this giant herd of dinosaurs. That's so cool to me. And then, that leaves one final thing to do, and that is to actually buy some gyrospheres. pretty satisfying to have this part of the uh, of the park done let me tell ya okay I'm gonna save and then we're gonna get our own gyrosphere and we're gonna we're gonna take a first hand look at how this all turned out save times always get to me. Okay, so we're gonna buy one more gyrosphere here. This is our VIP gyrosphere. There we go. Ah, oh, this would be so cool. This would be so cool. Going through the ferns, then Oh my god, and we see the triceratops first, just like they did. 
Like right there, oh man. Oh, this is so cool. God, I so wish Jurassic Park were real. Yeah, I guess the, uh, the ankylosaurs have kind of settled in that forest. That's That makes me happy. That makes me happy. It'll make them kind of a rare animal to see on tour. Getting stopped because this giant ass apatosaurus is just lumbering through. And this will look better, I think, once like you know that part is covered up. Oh, there's a stegosaurus. Once this part is covered up in trees as well from the Cretaceous cruise portion. Oh man, this is this is really something else. Whoa! Hello! <laughs> oh, I believe you have an Apatosaurus going through you. Whoa! Oh, God! Oh, man! Oh, jeez. Oh, man, he's just, like, staring at us. That was so cool! Yeah, I guess in the film, the only difference would have been they would have been seeing, like, the Parasaurolophus here, but, you know, we... Whatever, they're gonna be over there. What blue has died of old age? What? What? The zoo has not been open that long. Okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to find a new blue to put in there. Oh, that might mean all the raptors might be dying of old age. That's annoying. Okay then. Um, I might be trying the other raptor model. Oh, see, and there we go. So you still? Yep. Echo just died of old age too. That is unfortunate. So you still kind of get to see the Parasaurolophus, I guess. They're just like sort of doing their own thing over here. There's the Amontosaurus. Oh man, I really like how this turned out. This is... This is just really great. Oh man. Now we are going to go see the ankylosauruses real quick over in their little forest kingdom. Yeah, look at that. They're just chilling. They're just chilling right over here. Well, one of them is. I'm not sure where the other guys are. Probably somewhere in the deeper forest. That's where I dropped them, at least. Oh, yep, there's one more. Just napping. Alright, yeah, so I think that about does it for this episode, guys. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna go figure something out with the Raptors, and I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.